Hello and good day guys. In this video, I'm going to show you how I answered one of the UiPath level 3 uh, exercise which is calculate client security hash. So, I'm using two laptops right now. So, in, in my ad another laptop, I've opened the this PDF example. So, uh, uh, so, I'll just focus on how to do it using the UiPath Studio. So, before we started, make sure that you have installed the UiPath Studio and you have configured your uh, orchestrator. Because, uh, what's this? That's one of the important... Uh, it plays an important role in this uh, automation. Okay, so, let's get started. So first, we will be creating this uh, activity using the robotic enterprise framework. So let's start. Let's name it calculate client security hash. Okay, so I think I'll just add the date today. go so uh, in this activity as instructed on the PDF file we will not be using an orchestrator queue so we'll be just using orchestrator for for the asset for the uh, ACME system one login but for the uh, data to be processed we will capture that directly from the ACME system one website okay so just bear with me it's taking a long time to start creating the project but it will be completed soon okay so we have it now okay so in here uh, if you will go through the PDF file the first instruction is to uh, go with a with a config file so to go on that you need to use or click this button and then look for the data folder and open this config.xlsx file okay so here we have a default uh, values under the setting tab so since we will not be using orchestrator i think we should delete this this one and then according based on the pdf file we need to add two uh two names for the setting tab so the first one is the system one url and the other one is the sha one online url so we need to put value those names so I have here the uh, for the system one URL and for the SHA one URL okay so once you have that just save it and then we also need to add a uh, system one credential credential in here so i think uh, let's just name it um acme credential and let me copy that value or let me save this file first and let's copy this value so this is important because uh, this is the value the UiPath Studio will look from the orchestrator to get the system one credential for username and password. So make sure that you have already registered to the ACME system one and, and make sure to remember your username and password. So once you have username and password on this site, just go to the orchestrator, go to the asset uh, page and add another asset or add a new asset so 
let's name that acme credential which is the value that we put on the config file and then on the type make sure that you select credential so automatically it will look for username and password so for the username it's my email and for the password um I hope that I write it correctly so let's click create and you have now the ACME credential under your asset so going back to the studio or on the config file so what else did we miss in here okay now let's switch the constant and change the max retry number to 2 and then and then on in the framework we need to make a following changes uh, or we need to make a changes so we need to change the transaction item variable in the main file to data row type so where you can see that so here we have here three tiles variable arguments and imports so here in the variable uh, okay no nothing is showing because you need to select first the the main um the main sequence and then you can see here all the general variable that is accessible on the old process so we have here the transaction item so by default the variable type of this uh of this variable is queue item but since we will not be using the orchestrator queue we need to change this variable type into data row so if you do not see the data row available on the default options just click rows for types and then type data row so make sure to select the the one under system that data and there it's, it was updated to data row so once you update that you will receive uh, some error because there are there are arguments that are connected to that uh, general variable so we need to we need to update those as well so we'll, we'll start with get transaction data so let's go inside and okay we have here an error but this is uh we, we can simply fix this type of error just okay it's lagging just remove the value and then click here and then put it back again yep and here you can see that the error is because this transaction item uh, variable type inside the get transaction data sequence is currently declared as queue item so we need to change that from that uh, sequence so let's look for the get transaction data open it and so we will not be using orchestrator so we can now delete this item make sure to remove that and then here in arguments we have here the um out transaction item so we need to change that to data row and make sure to save once you close that here in the main what will happen is that it will remove the value because the variable type has been changed so we just need to select the transaction item again and okay so as you can see there's no error now but we still have one here so i think that's under the exception yeah so again magic trick remove the value click here and then put it back again and it's like a magic make sure to save that and going back here you can see that there's no more ever so we'll, we'll, we're good with the get transaction data now let's go to the next one which is the process 
so in the main file general business uh, as you go here you will see that there is an error with the process so double click to go inside that uh, sequence or main sequence and here you can see that the error is in here because again because of the uh, data type so we need to go here on the process sequence and change the argument of this one to data row save and then close it and then here in import argument just put the transaction item back as you can notice here the data row was already updated the uh, the update will only reflect once you save what you did on, on the sequence so oh there's another error where is that maybe here no let's check the exception okay the set transaction status is the last one because is there a transaction item here okay there's another one so we need to open this one set transaction status mm -hmm. okay let's change the argument type the data row and then since we are not using orchestrator we can, we can already delete this uh, this tree activity and make sure to save the file and close it now in the import arguments we need to oh this is no missing okay what's that to nothing so i think everything is good now okay to validate that go to execute tab and click validate and it says there's no no validation ever found okay so let me check the pdf file again okay based on the next instruction we need to create two folder for the two system that we will be using so go to the root folder again by clicking this icon and here uh, create new folder one is for the system one and another one for shawan online shawan online okay let's close that so when you are not when you're no longer using the config file you can already close it so because once we run the main file we might receive an error if the uipath studio detected that the, the that the config file is open okay the next one is we need to create a blank sequence under the uh, system one folder so go to design click new sequence and this is for the system one login so let's name this six sequence system one login and make sure to browse for the correct uh, path so system one select that folder and create so once you refresh this you can see that there's already a sequence under the system one folder so here in the system one login we need to create two in arguments so go here and the first argument is the system one url and it's a string and the other one is the system one credential okay and then we need to invoke the framework get app credential so let's look for the framework get app credentials 
which is this one and then here in the import argument uh, we need to assign the IN credential so this should be our system1 credential and here we need to create two new variables so just press control K if you if you do not have the variable first because using control K it will automatically create the variable and assign the value so let's just say username and press enter and for the password okay let's delete this one again control press control and then K let's name it password and hit enter so don't worry about this once you click ok it should be good and you can see that the variable are automatically added with the correct variable type so utilize using uh, that shortcut key because it, it's very helpful okay the next one is to use the open browser let's use open browser go to activities and search for open browser and we need to navigate or we need to insert URL which is the should be the value of the system one URL and then inside the do we need to add maximize window okay so let me just test this sequence so make sure to save that because I don't have an IE yet so let's run and this video will be divided into I'm not sure how many part but I, I will promise to complete this activity so what happened is okay okay I think it was not able to connect to our uh, to our orchestrator so let me see what happened okay because uh, there's nothing or there's no value in here so let's put uh, a default value so for the system one log for the URL let's use this why this is showing and for the system one credential let's use the this one so for, for testing purposes only make sure to delete that after the test save it and then let's hit run okay I think it was successful it was able to open the browser and in this moment it was able to capture or retrieve the the username and password based on the credential value that we sent so let me remove that now and now now that we have this page the next activity is to use type into we need to type the username and password in here so let's look for the type into and then let's capture the email text box and let's assign the username and then the next one is type secure text because uh, the variable type of the password is a secure text capture that uh, element and then here on the okay the, the secure text let's put password and hit ok and then after that we need to click the login so get this click 
indicate the login and this should be good so next one is so uh, make sure that you uh, check the simulate type property on on each type into activity as well on the uh, button login we need to click simulate uh, click so on the PDF file there's a good practice that it, it want us to include in this activity is this it it's uh it is using the element exist activity so once you have a successful login <laughs> i'm just trying to simulate it okay why No. Why? Okay, let let the program log in instead. So let me test this. <laughs> okay, I need to return the default value here. Why oh, I forgot my password to Acme. Do I spell it correctly? Yeah. It's a string, so make sure to uh, put it inside double code. Save it and let's try it because I can't log in. Let me close this one first and run. okay so i think it has a successful login so again we need to use uh an activity to ensure that we had a successful login is by checking uh if this element exists after we click the login button so we need to look for the element exists okay let's put that here and then let's capture what element we want to check so let me just check the selector of that okay wasn't able to capture it correctly so let's try again okay why why is that let's try to capture a little no no maybe because yeah should be able to cap why is that there okay and here we need to to assign an output variable so i think you can just call it element exists as well and then after that we need to use an if condition so here 
if element exists wait let me just uh, put this to complete so here in the condition we need to check if the element exists is true meaning that the login is successful so if it's true uh, I think let's just have a right line in here so we can see in the output that it has a login successful and then if no we need to add a click activity so let's simulate the in incorrect uh, login wait or I need to log out so for example you type a wrong credential so here should be able to manage that as well so we need to add a click activity on the else part so indicate the button and let me just check the selector it's a valid selector click ok and and according to the pdf file let's throw an exception so uh, i'm not an expert uh, or i'm not that uh, good in creating exception but here let's just say that it's a new business rule exception uh, invalid credential okay so I think we're good on the first part I will continue the other uh, I mean I will continue with the, with the other item on the next video see you then thank you for watching